how the pool sees standings. Look with one game to come, a winner piece for Wales, Fiji and Canada. And that's our next up match, Fiji against Canada. And a huge test of really how far the Canadians have come. They look good in day one, a uh, match one rather earlier today when they did beat Wales comprehensively 31-0, but it's an altogether different kettle of fish now. Fijians got beaten to the ball in their first game. They won't be happy about that. They like this effect at the start of the game. The unity and cohesion clearly visible, as is the sheer frame of these sevens players. Into the south, find that moment. Ben Brakespear will be taking this one, the Welshman, with the red of Canada about to try and repel the most resplendent rugby seven shirt I think there is. I'm putting it out there. Electric. Well, you talk about the big frames of the Fiji and then one who sat out the first game, just saw Vakarina Billy just comes into the side, yes. pop him in. Casual, just another six foot five sevens player, as you do. Towering presence. They say their prayers and they get ready for their own religion, bit of sevens. He's in for Ilya Panakovato, who did take a little knock in that first game. Final match on day one of a wonderful day of Sevens Rugby, Birmingham 2022 Commonwealth Games. And it is Fiji underway against Canada, two unbeaten teams, and that's a great confidence-boosting start for Fiji as Brock Webster soars, or rather for Canada, excuse me, as Brock Webster brings that restart down, and then they give away a penalty. Referee looking for a contest over the ball, Fiji tapping and going. They want to keep this tempo high, get these offloads going. Here is Vakuri Nabili, fresh legs, didn't play game one, ball in one massive mitt. <laughs> and then Mothi Nethangi comes in as a support player at the breakdown. He clears away, a couple of tries in the first match, Sivaloni Mothi Nethangi. Wide for Tui Mamba. Oh, offload doesn't quite stick. The run had been made, the support run had been made by Tuai. Didn't bring it in though. And it's Rasaku. Canada. Told to let it go. Everyone looks at the referee, then told what they were can and can't do, and they play on. A little bit of footwork from Matana. Short ball this time on the angled run. From Mothena Thangi, the ball from Vakura Nabili and Fiji break the Canadian defence first up. Tiburoni Mothena Thangi. Well, he's been generous with statistics on the screen there. He's most definitely bigger than 193. Another one of these towering lamppost players. And it's a lovely line. Vakura Nabili just squares up the defenders. And it's a line back at the ball. It's known as a hard line in sevens. You run it to try and straight through the gap. The Canadians looking to try and stop the width of this Canadian team, as you can see from their defensive line in the background, you go straight through the guts. Well, he's been repaying, repaying the faith that Ben Collings, the coach, has put in him after sitting out for a wee while. The veteran 31-year-old. Restart falls back on Fiji's side again and quickly look to attack through Matana and here's Vakure Nabili again just skipping through tackles long strides the familiar frame of Jasua Vakure Nabili slams the ball down for Fiji not quite given yet just going to check the ground in oh, he's giving it good because it looks like it's a child would around with a soft toy doesn't it they put a hole in the ground. Replacing divots as he goes past. Again, 190. He's having a laugh. I've got him at 192, but I think that might be a bit off too. They're just humble. He's about 195. So impactful in his carry. Two defenders are scattered. And there he is, just having fun out here in Coventry. The greatest stage, the sevens once again. Nothing wrong with that. And that's about as effective as a put down as you'll ever see. <laughs> the Olympic 
a gold medalist in this team, this wonderful Fiji side, who, as we said, have done everything in the game except win Commonwealth gold. The captain of Fungu restarts. Down the middle they go. It's well read by the Canadians, but they can't haul it in. And again, the loose ball falls on Fiji's side. Canada have been able to disrupt, but it's come off a red hand. So more position here for Fiji. Canada have just been camped. And having to make a lot of tackles early on. Deflection works their way too. And Billy in the middle of the field scoops it up. Here's Tuai. First time we see him into the fold, really. Easing his way into the tournament because his big boys are doing the work at the moment. The offload from Tui Mamba to Vakarina Billy, and then Vakarina Billy to Motena Thangi. Fiji on a string. Just cast a glance around the stadium and just see smiles. The instant reaction when you see these offloads. First of all, Tui Mamba accelerating into contacts. That's how you win them. Two defenders parted, the ball rolled round the corner. Bakuna Billy popping up on the other side of the pitch to where he normally is, uses his arm as a pivot, goes on the floor, transfers the ball, pops it up to another giant soaring through the sky. Resplendent from Fiji, pleasure to watch. It's so innate, isn't it? They don't have to make the call to say they're there on the shoulder. They know someone will be there. Totally. Such a skill set. They almost sense the presence. Work on electrons. I don't know how they do it, but it's magic. 19-0. And Canada under all sorts of pressure and not helping themselves. It's all cumulative, though. Well, fair play to Russell. He bounced straight back up there. And that is admirable. King of this game, Jerry Tuai, World Rugby Sevens Player of the Decade, two-time Olympic gold medalist. And a magician with ball in hand. Look at that pass. One, two, and they've cut through the width of this field. Now back up through the middle. Options left and right, and right it is. Tutsui Mumba stationed out there now, dragging Canadians with him. They might check this one, in fact. Oh, no try. Looked a little bit loose, but maybe enough there. Tutsui Mumba. Interesting to hear the interpretations of this from the referee and the TMO. It looks like there's no separation, so irrelevant of what happens after the ball hits the line. That, for me, is a try. He's in control of it when it hits the ground. He might lose it after it. Laws are suggesting looking for separation. The control is lost eventually, but it's the question of this, is this ball down at this very point here. Ben, I have a decision. Okay. No try. Okay, the ball lost. Is... Yeah, lost forward. forward. Yeah. You can argue that either way, to be honest. I would say benefit the attacker there. Just looked a bit clumsy. It was the knee coming in. I just dislodged it slightly. I have seen the has given but what a prospect this now is Canada on your five meter line with three giants of men about to try and push you off it talk about having to work your way out of trouble Cooper Coates feeds the scrum they've done really well the Canadian three though and that's a nice offload too for Mora oh the pass is tricky Webster tidies up and then runs headlong into Tui Mamba, who ripped it away just as the call was made from the referee. Such a difficult place to play against Fiji. Down your depths. You've got the kicking option, which they're going for here. Kick it to touch to try and have a bit of set piece against them. It's the one T area that Fiji have really changed is their discipline in defence, but he's not made touch. Oh, Tui was hearing back afterwards. He was trying to read it early. I don't think Jerry Tui realised that. They heard the hoot ago, but because it was a penalty, it still works. That's essentially the best ever penalty kick you're going to see. He's just put his hands on heads and hands to knees, Jerry Tui. The line is set. We're not going to go quick. It's because he could have stopped it, but he thought the hooter had gone. The rarest of errors. 
from this wonderful player. Great line-out ball from Teal for Canada. Wouldn't they love one before the break? And they might get one here for Webster for the corner. Stops, keeps himself in. Fabulous response from Canada and Brock Webster. And two, I once again apologising in back play, but Brock Webster, he'll take that every day of the week. Lovely for Morrow, getting that ball right in front of him. It's perfect in the stride of Webster, even the fist coming in to him, but not able to dislodge the ball. That's a bit of a lifeline. Just on Simi Kunitani and Sibaloni Mutanathangi. disagree yeah. that's fine well, that's not change anything. Yeah, fine. 19 points to 5 Fiji leading Canada at half time final match on day one of the Birmingham 2022 Commonwealth Games Rugby Sevens kickoff's just going to go 10 metres knocked back by Canada and tied it up by Josiah Mora Coates is the one who cleared away his player down and back play for Canada. Here's Jack Teal, the leaders of this Canadian side. That's loose though and scooped up by Fiji. Ball knocked out of the hands, knock on. So back and forth from both teams. Burner, the captain, goes to ground, working down a very narrow channel. There ain't no room through there. They were playing under advantage. Canada in that phase of play with just six men. It's Magongo on the floor. Just took a little bit of a collision. I think it was his, his middle, his ribs or his shoulder perhaps, just taking a bit of time. Eight and one sub, lad. Eight and one. He's going to be substituted anyway. There he goes. Touching the ribs on time. Magongo. Canada will bring on a couple of new players. In fact, Deshaun Bowen coming in, Lockie Kratz as well. Crossover athlete Deshaun Bowen here's got wheels. He'll be a great contest. Time back on. Crouch. Bind. Set. Webster try score for Canada shoots down the blind side taking on two eye stops and chops back the other way teal here is Bowen first touch for him in the match big heavy contact as well Early ball for Burner. And bounces kind up over halfway Canada. Got to be patient. Short for Teal, bumping off some bodies. Keeping the ball alive. You can see the Canadians just brace themselves for contact. And now Fiji try and pile in, but it's still there for Teal under pressure from Wakurinabili. Sizing up the options. Webster not taking too long with it. Still holding on to the ball. It's painstaking work from the Canadians. It's certainly painful. I'd rather run into walls than some of the Fijians. But fair play, Teal's the one that's going to get them going forward. I'm not sure how much juice he's got left. He's gone hard, carrying the ball forward, just slowing the tempo down a bit. They still realise there's a significant chance in this game. Webster just looking to drill it long. This time he does bang it hard into touch, right down to the 22. And this is where the influence of Henry Paul, with his rugby league background, is really apparent in how they try and play off the front line of attackers, people in behind it, as Fiji make a couple of replacements. Semi Kunatani coming on. There's Emmanuel on that line out. Here's that ball for Teal. Good skill from Canada to work the move. Webster on the wraparound trying to find Bowen in space, but the ball's too big. They'll come back and play a penalty, though. Yeah, impeding the lineup, not allowed to play the player in the air. It's back on Billy, I think. 
Well, more than a thank you more so on this near side. I'm tempted to go for another line out, such as their prowess at these set plays. Teal's going to come off, and he's been that key target. <laughs> he's worked his socks off, Jack Teal. With the tap in. Webster. Oh, stitch up. Advantage really pleasant, isn't it? Advantage over. See that tackle coming in now. Fiji are going to look to turn defence into attack. North Nithangi. Then spinning out of the tackle, Dangunu. Ripped away, though. Nicely done by Nick Allen. Now it's loose, and Webster has to go back and tidy up. And again, it's dangerous, but there's enough Canadian players back there. And almost, uh, I was going to say, a chance to create something. Some tired bodies in that passage of play. There are some tight skill sets. Just a few times Canada have had Fiji on the ropes, and it's been that pass either out wide to find the space, or perhaps there, intended for Russell. That's just not quite happened for them. You don't get a huge amount of chances against Fiji. It's about trying to keep the ball against them because you know how dangerous they are when they're going. Nice bit of deception. It's just that little bit of a flick pass, not able to be held. It wasn't Russell. In fact, it was Allen. It's frustrating. And he knows it. Okay, close the space then. Close the space. perhaps it was. Did a disservice to Allen. Bind. 19 points to five. No score in the second half yet. It's the fatigue. I mean, I, I've been watching Fiji very closely. There's moments where they don't perhaps have as much fuel as they have done previously, maybe just play themselves into this tournament. Give away the free kick at the scrum as Matt Oru charges forward. He had good injection in their first game. Here's Bowen covering, coming across in the form of Nathungu. That's just crept up a little bit from the Fiji captain, though. Just want to see Bowen in a bit of space. He is really quick for Canada. It's about trying to create the space for their fast players. You can do that with a line out, as we've seen already. Webster choosing to kick, condenses your players. It gets six players in the five meter areas to try and compete, get that ball clear. And they love a rap play, Canada. Front line runner going hard. Try and get Bowen just a little bit of space. Just wait. Just wait. Oh. Fiji yeah, making the change, so just to hold up his stay off the line. The captain yeah, himself actually, while Sienna Fung comes to the side. And again, Jeep. Brock Webster's worked really hard. Agreed. Here he is again in the thick of all the action. Advantage. Gets the ball back and advantage once more being played Canada's way. Bowen, a little bit of footwork, and then tries to back himself in the corner. That tackle's high regardless. Time off. Bowen saying he's got it down either way. Yeah, could well be a try given or pot potentially a penalty try, in which case no need for okay, conversion, but, okay, so but we go game on. Advantage. Yep. I need to check if you've got a try. Yep. And potential foul play in the after scoring. Okay, foul play on the tackle. Okay, just wait. Okay, this is kind of stairs to you, Leish. So I'm playing a penalty advantage against Fiji for midfield offside. First one to check, try yes or no. And if the try is no, can we then check foul play in the act of scoring, please? OK, that's well worded. Got that, so I'll check. The book bet here would be, no, he doesn't score it. Play in the, act of scoring. Yes, the penalty stops him from scoring it, but the try is given here. Oh, he's way out. But the question is, if it's foul play whilst he's trying to score it, could that be a penalty try? It's essentially worth seven points. So that's definitely high. Could even be a yellow card. Yeah. I would go penalty try. Yellow card here. Well, let's see what the referee said. I'm sure you've given them plenty ben, of advice over well, time, and we'll hear now. I have an answer for you. So, the first to, in answer to your first question, it, it, there's no try. Okay. But there is foul play okay. by uh, the Fiji 7, okay. who has come over the shoulder then onto the head and prevented the try being scored okay. so penalty try and yellow card. against number seven yeah yeah okay number seven it's not a try it's a high tackling act of scoring preventing a probable try pretty clearly explained by referee and tmo fiji all of a sudden will lose Vuviala Nanduvalo to the sinman for the next two minutes basically for the rest of the game and it's 19 12. And if for any other team in the world, you'd suggest 
that would be not the good situation to be in. However, Fiji are just as capable of scoring with six players as they are with seven. So for them, it's about their discipline. We always mention that, it could be back into their game, their ill-discipline. But now more so than ever, this next one minute 40 on the clock with six men, got to be white and white. Oh, that was stolen off the top of Josiah Mora's head there. Looked for all money to be in Canadian hands. But Fiji with possession and all the skill and pace in the world. He pushed him into the area, play on. He's pushed him into the tackle area. Turned into a real wrestle now as Kunitani is taken to ground. To I. The offload doesn't stick into the hands of Bowen, and is it going to call you a double knock on? By Fiji, second by Canada, scrum. Ooh, a few grumbles around the crowd. I had to hold my breath there. <laughs> There's no knock on play on. <laughs> I was wondering if Bowen had knocked that backwards. It looked like it, didn't it? Well, I mean, you're not going to get a better position than Ben Breakspear, right on the money there. Didn't trust his eyes. And here we go. Game on. How do you defend? A scrum in the middle of the field with just six men. Well, you try and detach your scrum off. Jerry Two Eyes pivotal to this. If he doesn't manage to either stop the ball or close down Brock Webster, it is an out and out overlap, two on one situation, either side of the pitch. Oh, Two Eyes scrags Webster, and then they can't control it, Canada. The player you want in a pressure situation has come up with a big play and he's won the ball back for Fiji or helped to do so. Scrum advantage now over. Standing in tackles, Dangunu. Still loose from Fiji and then scooped off the ground. Two eye, one way, twisted Allen inside out. And now the space on the outside. Two eye. With a wonderful ball forward, the offloads. Hitting the heat, Fiji hands. Dalgunu, player stays down and back play, and Tuai will get Fiji out of there. A masterclass in the final 30 seconds from Jerry Tuai. Sees Fiji home in a gritty encounter. 19 points to 12. Fiji take it over Canada. Jerry Tuai stepping up when he needed to. 19 12 it finished. Quite a strange second half for. Fiji against Canada. Admirable from the Canadians. They'll be pleased with that effort. Tease it beautifully. Yet another day of sevens coming tomorrow. Now, applause for the crowd, the fans in the stands who will have relished everything they have seen today. Lights on in Coventry Stadium and Fiji at the top of the pool seat standings, but Canada. As Rob Vickerman just said, we'll be pretty pleased with their day of work with Zambia to come for them tomorrow. Looking good for a place in the quarterfinals, the Canadians.